Come On, Come Over. This track was on Jacko's solo album. Uh, harps a little bit more to kind of Tara Powery line in the, in the verse. It's uh, very much a, a funky kind of bass riff that sits in there in the verse. When it drops into the, into the chorus section, it's very trademark Jacko. It's bubbling kind of bass line that locks in, bounces around with the drums and against the vocal. Um, fantastic bass line. I mean, when I first heard this, it was, you know, it was just unlike anything I'd heard before. So at the beginning, there's this, this lovely little opening lick and um, I'll play it for you and then we'll learn it. But it's this. <laughs> Okay, so what we've got is there's a little trill in the middle. We're starting on a G, um, which is the fifth fret on your D string. One, two, three, four, five, five notes on it. And then we're kind of sliding, sliding from the fourth fret up to the G and playing a, a B flat on the top, which is a third fret on your G string. There's a little dead note in there as well, I think. So it's, can you hear that? It's like, I'm not fretting anything. I'm just playing a dead note with this finger. It's over very quickly, but it's in there. You can either hit it on the D or the A as a dead note. And then we've got that slide up to the top note there. This is where the little trill comes in. It's from an F to an F sharp to an E flat or a D sharp, which is F third fret D string up to the fourth fret D string, back down to the F again. Third fret, that's your trill. And that's sixth fret on your A string. Down to the C, which is third fret A string. And then down to sixth fret on your E string. And then we're following it by these three notes from G down to the F. Three, two, one. It's a little bit tricky, but you, I'm sure you'll get your head around it. And then we're into the next section. The next section, this is what it is. Now this takes up most of the, the verses. So this is nice, easy. Once you've dropped into this section and you've learned this bass line, it, it just locks into the drum part. Okay, I'll show you what that is and where, where it's played. We're starting on fret eight on your D string. So that's a B flat on your D string, fret eight. And we're going eight, nine, 10 on your D string, eight on your G string, back to 10 on your D string. And uh, with your right hand, this is quite tricky. To get it nice and tight and locked into the part. Play it with your first three fingers, leaving your little finger free. The reason for that is because you want to play the first note of the next riff with your little finger. And this I've found is the easiest way of doing it. The next start of the next riff will be on fret 11 with your little finger. Eight, so it's fret 11 on your E string, which is an E flat. Eight, nine, and 10 on your A string. Eight on your E string for the ending. So you get this. Cross to your little finger, end on your first finger. And this hand here, you need to lock into what you're playing. Because it's quite fast. 
Okay, that's the verse riff. That's nice and easy. You can kind of sit on that once you've got it sussed. Um, in total, we have eight bars of riff before the vocals come in. If you're playing with the record, if you're playing with the playthrough, it's, uh, it's basically eight bars of bass line dropping into 16 bars of where the vocals would come in with a stop at the end of two Cs, which is this eighth fret note. And that's 12 complete bass riffs before it drops into the chorus. I'm calling this a complete bass riff is this. So that's a complete bass riff. So you play that 12 times or you play um, 24 bars. That's what it is, total of the bass riff uh, before it drops into the chorus. Then we're into this little pickup. So once you've played the double stop of the C, you hear the horn part go da 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 da. There's a little pickup, which is from your C. And that's three notes, C, C sharp and D. That's fret three, four and five on your A string. And we're into this bubbling middle section. Okay, we're into the chorus. Now this is the bit, this is the part of the song that everybody's interested in. It's got this legendary bass line, it's kind of a bubbling Jacko trademark really. Um, it's full of little dead notes, the timing in it is just impeccable, it's spot on. Uh, I'll play it slowly and, and then I'll play it up to speed. You'll notice when I play it slowly you can hear the dead notes. They make a lot more sense when you actually bring it up to speed. Um, and these little, these little dead note parts are, are fairly important to the way the whole thing sounds. Now played slowly, it kind of sounds, sounds a little bit lumpy, but when you play it up to speed, it should flow. What we've got here is a D, so we've run up from the C up to the D, the D going up to, that's fret 5 on your A string, up to fret 7 on your D string, and fret 5 on your G string. So we've got a D, an A, and a C. So when we hit the A here on fret seven, we've got two notes. Back down to seven. We've got two Bs there, so we get this. So that's fret four on your G string. Back to the A. We've got two notes on that as well. Actually, one of these notes could be a dead note. So we end up with that. Now you can either play the dead note on the D, or you can play it on the A. Yeah, either way, as long as you get this noise. And then we're down to the A. And what we've got here is fret five on the A and then a dead note. So we got five, seven, dead note, two notes on the C sharp, which is fret four on the A. So we get this. Again, up to speed, it makes more sense. So we have this, that's what I've shown you so far. The second half of this bass line. Okay, two ways of playing this. You can actually play two notes on each of these, or you could play it this way. So I'm hammering the second of each notes. Depends which one you've 
prefer and which one you think he's doing. Or... Um, I'll show you, I'll show you both anyway. We start with exactly the same bass line. So after you've played the previous line, we play the same thing again. And then it differs here by we're going up to fret seven of your G string. We've got an open D, almost as a dead note, coming down on fret four of your D string, across to fret four as your G string. It's quite a short note there. And then we've got this little run up. Either playing it this way or fretting every note. And that would be from F sharp, G, G sharp, A. That's four, five, six, and seven on your uh, D string. And again, it's this hand that you're gonna find quite tricky. Um, remember this thing called the rest stroke? With this hand, it's where when you play a note, your finger comes to rest on the string underneath. Hopefully you can see that. So, it just gives you a nice consistent hit on each string, it's called the rest stroke. Uh, that makes up kind of the first riff. I'll, I'll play it to you again slowly. Okay, that's as far as we've got. I can, that's kind of a complete four bar section of that bass riff. Okay, the next section, we're hitting this D again, playing the same shape. Same feel as the first time we play it. Playing the D again. And we're stopping on the A here. And then the interesting bit is where it links into the next riff. So what we've got there is after we've hit this A, we're gonna shift across with our third finger and hit on the ninth fret of your E string. Same, same principle as, as we played before, so it's nine, 10, Either a dead note or an open A will work. Up to seven and eight on your A string. Nine, ten, seven, open eight. And then we're gonna play the same shape as we played down on the D riff. And I'll give you those fret gnomes. So that's fret A, fret 10, on your D string, fret eight on your G string. Back to 10 on your D string. Fret seven on your G string. Back down to 10 on your D. Yep. That's basically gonna link them back, link you back into this main bass riff by doing this at the end. So we're starting on fret seven and we're running into that bass line that's in the verses. Seven, eight, nine, 10 and eight on your G string. Back to 10 on your D. So seven, eight, nine, 10 on your D. And that is the beginning of the next bass line. In and then you need to get across here to play with your little finger to play. 
So that's fret 11 with your little finger as we did before to play the bass riff from there. It's a bit tricky to play that bit as well. And we're into the main part. I'll play that again for you. So I'll play it from the link where it changes key. So hopefully you've got all those notes. Playing it up to speed is uh, a little bit tricky, but the, the key to it is to get these notes nice and clear at a, at a lower, slower tempo. And then when you slowly notch it up, it'll work. This bass line in the verse is as before. So we have uh, four bars of bass riff. Uh, so that's two complete riffs before the vocal comes in. And then we've got 16 bars of it um, with the vocal, which is effectively the verse, um, playing up to that double stop C at the end. So 16 bars of riff, that's eight complete bass riffs up to that double stop at the end, double two notes leading back into this chorus section. Um, now the the next chorus section is double length, and there's a little, a little kind of twist in the middle um, that I'm going to show you. It's a little bit tricky, and the bass line is, is kind of glued together in the middle by this little kind of turnaround, really. I'll take it from the beginning. So you basically have 16 bars of this bass riff, which alternates between... <laughs> This little turnaround. Which we had originally. Um, and it kind of plays, he alternates this line. So we actually play that twice. Then go back and play the same thing again. And this time, we go down and we play this F sharp. Which is um, fret two, three, four, five on your E string, and the same on your A. Yep, and we come back, that drops us back into. which is pretty well exactly the same as we had before. There's a couple of little, little bits that he sticks in here and there, but I think you'll pick them up as we go along. This, this little turn around. There's a little bit where he misses out the A flat and goes straight to, he either plays, I think is more likely where he actually misses out this uh, A flat, goes straight to the A, and then plays an A underneath it. So you get this. So have a listen out for that. It's after this F sharp section. Um, once we've got that, we're back into this riff again. And then we've got this little link again. Okay, that kind of covers that little section in the middle. So just remember it's double length, 16 bars, that little left sharp turn around, slight variation on this A. Uh, he plays it through as before, the link is the same. So you need to be quite sharp on that. And then ready with your little finger to play. And we are back into the verse bass riff again. 
Okay, we've got 16 bars of verse, the same bass line that we had before. Plays that, 16 bars, eight complete riffs, and then we end on that. C runs up to this chorus part. That is basically what this whole section is built out of, that section of bass riff, and he builds variations in. Uh, the variation at the end of the eight bars, one of the variations is this little F sharp turnaround that we had on the first time round. At the end of this, we've got a little slight displacement of a bass riff that goes like this. So it sounds like this. So what we have there is after you've played the F sharp, run up as before, we move up to, move up to fret nine, slid up from fret seven on your A string. And we've got two notes on that last seven on your A. And that's seven on your D string as well. We get this. So the link is the same, we've just got this. And the, the, the link as always from fret five. Then we have this little bit, that slight variation on the, on the groove. So we go from D, which is the fifth fret on the A string, to a F sharp, which is your fourth fret on your D string. And then we've got a little dead note in between that, which I tend to play on my A string. And we've got two notes from the, from the A flat up to the A, which is fret uh, six and seven. In between these where I'm playing down to the A, we've got this little dead note as before. So we get this. Yep. So that whole section complete as a little turnaround is this. Okay, you'll hear how that fits in um, when you listen again to the record in the playthrough. That's a little turnaround. There's a couple of variations he plays in there. They're very rhythmic little ones with before, as, you, as I pointed out before, the... Which is a slight variation on the where we're hitting the low A, um, and then after this section, uh, we you can hear that on the fade it go Jacko drops into a slightly different groove, which is this one. Okay, and what we've got here is a D pretty well as I played before. D, F sharp, with the dead note. Just make a circle out of it. And that's kind of how it fades out on the record. Um, there's a lot to be learned in this tune. I mean, Obviously, the note side of it, where I'm showing you the fretting in this hand, obviously very important, the dead notes. But the hard part you're probably going to find is with this hand, getting the dead notes in and just getting the general feel rolling along. Because this hand is playing a lot of these little incidental dead notes. So um, if you're not used to that, that's going to take a lot of getting used to at this end. Um, so really, if you're having trouble with this, you may find it's not so much to do with the note side, it's to do with this hand. So practice the stuff slowly and, and it'll actually come together. It did for me anyway. So good luck with that and enjoy. <laughs>